Hi, Leela here again today with another throwing video. Today's video is a tutorial on pour overs. I'll be showing you how I throw pour overs in one piece, so the base and foot attached all at once, and then how I turn that into a usable pour over without having to do too much trimming. The first steps of throwing pour overs are no different than the first steps of throwing anything else. So I'm going to be getting my puck attached to the wheel and centered, so I'll be doing some coning and centering for the next little while, making sure everything is nice and centered with no air bubbles and no wobble. After centering, I'm going to open my puck of clay. I'm going to open to about a quarter of an inch thickness left there at the base, and the opening should be narrow and sort of U-shaped at the bottom. Next, I'm going to split the wall of the puck to form the foot of the pour over. So I'm going to go about a third of the way down the puck and push in to form a little shelf, and then push directly down while supporting the outside edge of that, which will then form the foot of the pour over. I'm going to push this down and thin it out until it's about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. From this point, I'm able to start making my poles as normal. The only difference is that instead of starting my pole at the very base of the wheel head, I am starting where that foot starts. I'll make two or three pulls here to get the pour over to be its final height. Next, I'll be using a rib to shape the pour over. I'll be using one on the interior surface to push outward and form a nice sloped cone. You have to make sure that your cone is sloped enough that coffee will run nicely down the, down the sides. This is not the only part you have to think about when making the interior of a coffee cone, but it is a very important step. And then I will also use a rib along the foot to make sure it's nice and smooth and along the exterior to make sure it is nice and smooth and dry. And I'll keep addressing the foot and the like spot where the foot meets the pour over cone as that's a very important spot.
Once the pour over is the shape I want, I'm going to clean up the outer edge of the foot with my rib, and I'm also going to recenter the lip to make sure that's nice and soft and round. So now I've finished throwing my pour over. I'm gonna make sure my hands are dry and I'm gonna carefully wire off the pour over and set it aside to let it dry. I'm gonna leave it to dry until the lip is set up enough that if I flip it over, it won't stick or distort, but I want the bottom to stay soft, so I'm not going to let it dry for too long. Now it's time to finish the base. I will recenter the pour over upside down as if I'm going to be trimming. I'm doing this with tap centering and then I'll attach it to the wheel head with some lugs of clay. And then I'm going to be taking my rib and instead of trimming, I'm going to be using my rib to kind of bend the base into shape, which is why I wanted the base to be still soft. So I'll kind of, I'm almost throwing the base into shape. I'm aiming for a rounded convex shape so that the very center of the pour over is the tallest point on this piece. So I'm going to be very carefully with my rib pushing from the very center out and down all the way along the rim. While I'm doing this, I wanna make sure I'm supporting the outside edge of the rim. If you push too hard in just one spot, you're going to break that rim. So you have to do this with a very slow, consistent pressure and you don't wanna push very hard, just it's gonna take its time and kind of slowly move to this proper shape. It's gonna be a little wobbly looking, but in the end, it doesn't matter if it's a little wobbly. Once you fire it, you can't tell. The point with this is I don't like to trim a foot ring into my pour overs. I like my pour overs to be able to sit comfortably on pretty much any size cup. So I don't add a like lip or anything, they're just smooth, rounded spots on the bottom. And when I fire them, I generally fire them upside down on their rims so the bases don't have any pressure on them. While I primarily use my rib to get this into shape, I will also trim a little bit of material off to make sure that is completely smooth and it leads up to a nice curve to the spot where the holes for the pour over are going to go. It's really important that this area has no flat spots because if there's a flat spot there when you go to use your pour over later, it's going to dribble. If the spot where the holes in the pour over are going to be is the lowest point of your coffee cone, you are going to get a nice pour and you won't need a foot ring to prevent water or coffee from kind of um, leaking out around the rim of your cup. So that's why I spend so much time making sure the bottom is completely smooth and round. I will also trim just a little bit around the outer edge of the foot just to make sure it stays nice and clean and smooth. So this is my process for making the body and foot of pour overs. I really hope you like watching and hopefully you learned something different. Everyone has a different way to do this and I know my way is a little odd. So I hope you enjoyed and learned some tips. There's still a whole bunch more steps for me to do on these pour overs as they need some texture on the inside. 
a handle, and some decoration. So hopefully some more videos will be coming on pour overs. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my videos. I put a new one up every Wednesday at five o'clock. So there's a whole lot more to come. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I hope you have a great day.